Hello, welcome to another video. I'm making this because a subscriber asked me to make a video solving problem 4.86 for Microelectronic Circuits 8th edition. And this problem actually does a great job showcasing a very common use of the diode, which is the clamp capacitor circuit. So let's review it very briefly. So a clamp capacitor circuit is typically built like this. So we have an input voltage source connected in series with the capacitor coming first, followed by a series connection of the diode. Now, why would someone do this? Let's analyze the input voltage that's being fed to the circuit. We get a negative six volt to four volt square wave, so the difference is 10 volts. And interestingly, what we observe at the output is because of the capacitor's charging characteristics, we only get a positive output voltage. So this is showcasing a common diode usage column DC rectification or a DC rectifier. We are rectifying this input voltage so that when we get an output voltage, we are only seeing positive values. Instead of getting negative six, we start at zero volts and we achieve a maximum of 10 volts. Now I could get into the physics of the capacitor, but that would make this video much longer. So let's move on to the problem. So here we are at problem 4.86. A clamp capacitor using an ideal diode with cathode grounded is supplied with a sine wave of 5 volts root mean square. What is the average DC value of the resulting output? So let's draw this circuit again because it has one key difference from the previous example I showed you. So here's our input voltage. And we have a capacitor here, of course, and it's connected in series with the diode. However, now the cathode is grounded, whereas in the previous example, it was the anode that was grounded. So that's going to change the behavior quite a bit compared to the last example. Again, the output voltage is being read across the diode. So let's first draw the input signal. So some differences already. This is going to be a sine wave. And what is the maximum value V peak? Well, it's equal to square root of two multiplied by V RMS or five root two volts. So that means the maximum value of the sine wave will be five root two. And because it's being fed to the capacitor, this is what the capacitor is receiving. Again, the maximum is five square root of two. The minimum is negative five square root of two. Now let's analyze the behavior of the voltage when VI is less than zero and when VI is greater than zero. I'm going to start with VI being greater than zero. So the capacitor is being fed the input voltage. Now I know based on the physics of a capacitor, once we reach the maximum voltage, it's going to behave as an open, right? It's, it's fully charged. And that means it is taking all of the input voltage, meaning that V out will equal zero because it is behaving like an open. But when V i equals negative five root two, or if it's less than zero, then we see that the capacitor is discharging and will actually behave like a short. And we are going to receive the total negative voltage from both the input and this clamped capacitor. So we will just say VI equals VO plus this extra clampage from the capacitor. So that means the maximum will just be uh, plus. So really it will just be minus five square root of two. And hopefully I will show this better with a graph. So here's time, here's our output. So again, this is zero, this is the maximum. This would be negative five root two. And this is really the center of our sine wave for the output. So it's going to kind of feed up, dip down and up. And what's this? maximum value at the bottom, it is uh, it is 2 times negative 5 square root of 2. So 
our voltage from peak to peak is equal to 2 times negative 5 square root of 2, which means that the average DC value of the resulting output average would be simply negative 5 square root of 2. So the difference between this circuit and the previous circuit is now because the cathode is grounded, the DC voltage is being rectified to a negative output voltage, whereas in the previous, the anode was grounded and the rectification was positive. So we can see that depending on how we flip the diode, that will determine if the DC rectification brings the output voltage to negative or to fully positive. Thank you for watching my video. For any comments, questions, or problem suggestions, please feel free to reach out to me by email or in the comments section. Thank you and have a great day.